And today, that thing is going to be talking about sales and overcoming some overcoming objections, and particularly how to role play and prepare your language to better overcome people's objections and make sure you're maximizing clients. And this isn't just important for those of you that are selling new programs. For trainers that work within facilities, this is important for you too because as trainers, the whole name of the game for us is compliance. We're trying to help people shift behaviors in an uncomfortable way. We're trying to help people uh, be, be uh, more accountable to themselves and change their lifestyle to ultimately produce the effect that they want, which is to look and feel great in the mirror. And for most people, like the, the, the reason they fail, quite simply, is because it feels like punishment. It feels difficult. It feels frustrating that they have to give up or change the things that they like or enjoy in order to get in shape. And that's what we're up against. So these things are important for you, too, to kind of help people understand and make choices for themselves. Because, well, to be totally honest with you, as we kind of kick this thing off, when we're talking about role playing and overcoming coming selling objections the number one thing is is that we have to help people see that this is their idea it's not us telling them what to do it's us helping them see that this is a good idea that they should put the em emphasis or effort into making these changes happen in, in their life because it's them that gets the benefit and that's the key to the selling situation so you know what let's dive right in let's talk about uh, selling objections what they are and how we overcome them so we'll talk a little bit about language today and, and what we're going to say, but the most common objections you're going to face are time, money, and spouse. These are pretty much hands down the things, the, the reasons that people are going to feed you or tell you why they're unsure if they can get going today. So as you hear any of those objections, I always want you to think in the back of your mind, number one, there's a trust issue. You have to overcome that trust issue. And then number two, we have to help them see the logic or reason why none of these three things should hold them back. So let's talk about some of the things that I've always done uh, when I've been in a selling environment with clients or prospects or even coaching clients uh, in terms of helping them see the value. Number one, particularly in the gym environment, when you're selling fitness uh, programs is movement. And what I mean by movement is if you meet somebody at the door and shake their hand and greet them, they've just stepped into something that is very uncomfortable. Okay, they're often, when I worked in a public gym, they're often looking around, feeling intimidated, and you could see in their body language they were very closed and very uncomfortable. So the very first thing is to greet them, make them feel welcome, ask them a couple of questions, but then get them moving. So get them away from the entrance, get them deeper into your environment. Think about this when you have a guest in your home. You greet them at the door, niceties at the door, and then they come further into your home. Maybe you sit at the table, maybe you sit in the living room, people begin to relax and they begin to converse. It's no different in these situations. So if you're not moving people from the entry point and around where they can see different things, I think you're doing yourself a great disservice in terms of helping people see the value in what it is that you present and feel comfortable enough in that environment in order to be able to overcome those objections. You know, these videos are no different in that respect. It is so strange talking to a camera knowing that all of you out there are paying attention and listening, but I can't see you. So even in the first few seconds of this video, if you rewind it and watch it now, I think you'll see that I'm actually much more relaxed and much more fluid in how I'm speaking because even I get nervous in these situations. It's a new and uncomfortable environment and it takes us a little time to relax and grow comfortable with what it is that we're doing, saying, speaking about or experiencing if in the case of a, a tour with you and exploring the need for your services. So really, really important. I can't tell you how important movement is. Make sure you get people moving around the facility. Even if you're in a boot camp facility that's just one room, the different perspective from different points in the room and being able to talk about your business and services from different points will be extremely beneficial in helping people trust you and feel comfortable enough that we can get through the trust and only focus on those other reasons that they're worried about starting something new. Next is body language, okay? I've always been a guy to talk with my hands. I'm not always the most expressive from a voice standpoint, but it is really, really important that you get some movement going on because so much of our communication is nonverbal, which is why video is better than text, you know, why getting in front of someone is better than being on the phone because our brain interprets all of those nonverbal communications where it's, you can see what the person's body language is and your brain interprets what that means, which is also, we'll skip ahead and come back to it, why it's really, really important to mirror. So if you can mirror how somebody is standing, if you can mirror a little bit how they're moving in a very comfortable and natural way, 
their brain indicates that you are somebody that they should be more likely to trust, that it's somebody that they will probably more enjoy being around because you are similar to them. It's just how those nonverbal cues in your brain works. Really, really important when you're speaking to somebody, when you're talking to somebody, I cover this constantly. And if you haven't already, I encourage you, just type my name into Google, watch my TED Talk, I equals EIS. It really is what I believe in terms of how we can control our life and harness the power of inspiration. But EIS all started as my acronym for the selling situation is that nobody can make a decision about anything without being emotional. But along the way, we have to have plenty of affirmation. So when you're meeting with somebody, when you're talking in a selling environment, even watching this video as you're trying to learn about overcoming selling objections, isn't it important for me to ask you, does this make sense? Even though I can't see you, even though we're not in the same room together, by asking you if it makes sense and having you think to yourself, yes, this makes sense, it helps you to move forward in the process to get a better grasp on the content that I'm delivering. In the case of your prospects, it's so, so important to get those yes for two reasons. Number one, their understanding and affirmation of what it is that you're explaining, because if they're confused before you ask them to buy your services, they're never going to make a decision. Okay, It's going to be too confusing, too frustrating. They will need to go home and think about it, which is definitely probably tied for number four in the primary objections that you're going to hear. So we need to eliminate that need to go home and think about it by making sure that we get those yes affirmations that they do understand what it is that we're explaining. But there's another reason that we need to get yeses, okay? And that's a respect and permission situation. If, if I get a yes from you, does this make sense? Can I proceed? Can I show you what our memberships look like? I'm getting permission from you to show something, which is really, really important in today's world. Okay, good example yesterday is uh, Sirius XM phoned me. Yep, I'm totally going to bash Sirius XM here. They phoned me like seven times on an auto dialer in the last like 48 hours. And I was actually thinking about renewing my subscription, but I was so annoyed that they repeatedly auto dialed me, auto -dialed me uh, to the point where I had no choice but to answer the call. I just told the lady, remove me from your call list, right? Because they hadn't gotten any permission from me at any point. They hadn't given me enough space to accept. They hadn't left me even a brief voicemail, which also would have annoyed me to check my voicemail, but at least it would have been nice to say, hey, you know what? We value you as a previous customer. We'd love to see you reactivated. We're going to call you again in, say, three days or two days or 24 hours, at least giving me a heads up, giving me a chance to even subconsciously give them that permission to pitch me again. So it's really, really, I don't know, maybe that sounds goofy to you guys, my experience with a telemarketer or automated call, damn serious, I tell you. But, uh, you know, I think it's so, so important and I urge you to try it. Get permission from people. Get them saying yes. And I think as they give you permission for things, you're going to find your success is going to be a lot better in a selling environment. The non-script script. script. I really, you know, forever, I try to avoid giving my staff and teams any kind of scripts. I maybe give them some bullet points and I want them to make it up as they go or I want them to use the language that they're most comfortable with because I think we can all detect that BS meter when somebody isn't being sincere, when they're reading from a script, you know, and it just, it, it just, we all just tune out. We just turn off because we're not interested. We want people that are genuinely sincere towards us, believe in what they're saying and want to help and work with us, which leads me to creativity. The minute that you are creative, you are screwed. Okay. So it's a completely different function in our brain. When we access part of our brain to become creative, this one was when we start saying, um, and ah, and ah, and those things. And we get stuck because our brain is trying to be creative and we lose the trust of whoever is with us because on some level, they are likely to know that we may or may not be telling the truth, that we may or may not be confident in what it is that we're saying. So this is why role playing and practicing is so, so important because you have to be totally natural and fluid. You have to be able to step and maybe even make a video like this where you can just talk about a subject that you feel confident in with minimal ums and ahs or minimum need to be creative. Because as soon as we do that, we lose the trust of the user. Just like I would of this video if I was reading you know, from pages and pages or I had a teleprompter in the background, you would know. You would know and it would be less interesting, especially because I'm not the most varied person in terms of tone. Some people can get super amped up and they can get like really highs and lows that keep us engaged. But if you're not one of those people, you definitely just have to feel comfortable what it is that you're talking about, which is why you have to practice. Now, let's get to the most important part of this in terms of role playing. 
You have to, have to, have to, have to, have to. Every time that somebody says no, make sure you take a minute or two to reflect after that appointment and make some notes. What exactly did I say before they said no? What exactly did I say next? Not a matter of, well, I talked about pricing or features and benefits. What were the exact words that you said? So did you say, Mrs. Jones, you know, I, you're going to love our services because if you think about it, it's only going to be the cost of a cup of coffee per day. Okay, that would be things that you would want to document. And by the way, that's not going to work. Okay, so remember what the prospect actually cares about is that, well, it's the old acronym with them. What's in it for me? Selfishly, that's all they care about. What's in it for me? So we need to make sure that we get them super emotional. So you have to record the exact words that you're saying before they say no and after they say no. And then you need to sit down and sit across from somebody and you need to have them be the customer and you need to say those exact words again, changing things. So let me try to give you an example. If we're dealing with the money objection, one of the most common things that I find is that when somebody presents pricing, Mrs. Jones, here's the three options that we have, the low option, the medium option, the high option. Most of our clients do this. Which one do you think would be the best fit for you? Then Mrs. Jones might say, I'm not sure. I need to go home and think about it. It all seems expensive. Mrs. Jones, I totally understand. If you're like me as a consumer, everything is expensive, especially when it's not something critical that I need or even when it is. It would be nice if we didn't have to pay for everything because I don't know about you, I'm always trying to save money. Am I right? Yes, it's a chance for me to get an affirmation and ultimately to gain a common ground with Mrs. Jones in that we all feel the same way. So Mrs. Jones, can I ask you, when we started here today and talked about what was important to you, you know, how would life be different if this was the program that worked for you? What would it feel like if you finally lost that weight you're hoping to? How would that extra confidence feel? How would that make you feel going to work each morning or socializing on the weekends? Would it be different? So you see what we're doing here in terms of money. We need to get back to that emotional situation with Mrs. Jones. And I'm engaging her, asking her questions. What's in it for me? We all like to talk about ourselves. Mrs. Jones wants to talk about herself. So we need to ask her the right questions to get her talking. We need Mrs. Jones to see the value in the product that it is that we're offering. So what is it, what is it going to be worth to her? Ultimately, after establishing that, then we return. Mrs. Jones, can we talk again about programs? Respect. I've given her the opportunity to give me permission again. Yes or no? If she says no, what do I do? Oh, crap. Okay, so whenever you get a no, E-A-S. Okay, it's back to emotion again. No, what do you mean, Mrs. Jones? I thought this was important to you. I thought you were committed to finally start a fitness program. You know, like, what's changed? Help me understand. Make sure that we have ample communication. So really, really important, and we'll come back to mirroring. When you're practicing again, try to listen very closely to the words that they're saying and try to use some of the words that they're saying in the same order that they said them. I'm really not sure that I can afford this. I totally understand, Mrs. Jones. A number of people aren't sure whether they can afford this, or I I can appreciate that you might not think you can afford this. But let me ask you, if not this, what else would you do? Right? Let's talk about plan B. But the point is, is that by matching the same words, again, it's that nonverbal communication or how our brain interprets certain body language or signals that it actually helps us decide or decide to trust somebody. So you're, when you're role playing with somebody, you've got to take notes. I can't stress that enough. When you're done with a sales appointment, make some notes. What were the exact words that I said? Use those notes. When you practice with somebody, practice each scenario 10 times and then meet with the next prospect and see if it's a different result. Because by practicing at least 10 times, you start to get a flow where you don't have to think about what you're gonna say. It's gonna be natural. Uh, Some final things, Um, many of you that know me, know me that I'm only five foot four. So uh, the reason that's important is from a selling environment, it makes me pretty non-intimidating. Most people are as tall or taller, more often taller than I am. It makes me a less intimidating individual, even when I was more muscular on my bodybuilding days. So if you are quite a tall individual, it's going to be important for you to move around and then get them seated so that you can be at eye level. If you are a very muscular individual, it's going to be very important for you to wear more clothing, even 
dress a little bit more professional, whether it's a shirt and tie or something of that nature in effort to eliminate that intimidation that you feel. If you have tattoos, which are beautiful and popular these days, make sure that they are covered up, okay? You have to be conservative in terms of being in front of these people. Assume that they are gonna be quite easily offended. So you need to be very neutral and conservative in how you're presented to them. Uh, most importantly though, like it really comes down to uh, getting, asking the emotional questions, uh, making sure you're following up that with the affirmation and yes questions and respectfully getting their permission and moving forward uh, through the scripts and using exact wording to mirror them and make them feel as comfortable as possible. Um, last and final thing, just to repeat one more time, you know, role playing, you have to make sure that you know the exact words and practice those words. Each one 10 times before trying again, make some notes. 10 times again, make some notes and keep going until you're getting those conversion rates of 75 to 80%. So I'm just going to check here and see if we got any uh, questions. Just a reminder, guys, if you'd like to uh, give me those likes, loves, and shares, um, I'd really love to uh, help more people. So put it out across the world there. And uh, I see Krista here, you say you're having a hard time putting in the yes questions during the close. No problem. You know what? So one of the basic best ways to start, number two things. So I also used to always tell people, challenge yourself to get 10 yeses before you even present pricing. So mentally, from the minute you meet them, you're going to keep track in your mind of how many times you get to say, get them to say yes. Now, you don't have to put the pressure on yourself to get 10 every single time, but it's just like working out. It's practice and keeping score. For, so after your sales consultation, just write down the number. How many yeses did I get? And try to beat it next time and get to 10 yeses even before you present pricing. But in the close, like one of the best places to start for asking uh, yes questions is just simply saying, does this make sense? You know, stop, pause. We have three different programs, okay? We have three times a week, we have four times a week, and we have unlimited. Uh, most of our clients choose the unlimited program. It is the most popular. Does this make sense, Mrs. Jones? It can be as simple as that, but those yeses and affirmations are super, super important. So let's see if we have uh, any other questions here. I'm just going to refresh again. All right, it doesn't uh, doesn't look like we have any extra questions to ask or, or answer rather. So I hope that was beneficial for you guys. If you'd like to know more about my method of selling, do check out uh, howtoselffitness.net. I have my whole course there that gives you all my materials and all the lessons from language to emotional language exact scripts for overcoming objections, the sales report, and a whole bunch of other good uh, goodies, some really great bonus training with my good friend, Samantha Taylor, who I think is one of the best fitness salespeople on the planet. So you want to check that out. And uh, why do I keep doing these live videos? And why am I trying to get more exposed out on Facebook? Because I know how tough it is to make it in the fitness industry. I love you guys. I appreciate you. I think we have the best job on the planet and how we help people. And I would like to help more fitness professionals. So if we can help you grow your fitness business, check us out at www.fitprothinktank.com and uh, find out about our group coaching program where we can help you with all this stuff and more. Guys, have an awesome day. I appreciate you. To my private clients, our group clients, you guys are awesome. It's going to be a kick-ass week and you guys are going to help so many people this week. Okay, I'm out of here to start my coaching call. See you later, guys.